web friendly prior if anyone's kind of followed me over the years web friendly was my main brand and everything i did was a product of web friendly so if you're familiar with social media director which andrew was a part of that program uh that was a product of web friendly uh internet masterminds which was the meetup group that we ran for a long time for over 10 years uh that was also a product of web friendly so over the last year or so i have been taking all the products and and putting them into their own assets into their own sites so internet masterminds now lives on internetmasterminds.org social media directors now on socialmediadirector.com and um, all my agency work is on mattastafan.com, right? So then Web Friendly was just kind of sitting there and it was just it's just like a, a blog. I had some people who were kind of taking some of the trainings that I did and transcribed that into blog posts and so on. And there was about 40 blog posts that were kind of sitting there. And I want to turn it into more of doing, you know, news media, that sort of thing. So the site was kind of sitting there, it was on WordPress and I... I hate WordPress. Um, I don't know about you guys, but uh, I'm not that technical and I don't like, I like the flexibility of WordPress. I like that it is the standard CMS if you're going to be building a website, right? Like it's very flexible. You could do a lot with it, but I don't like how technical it is. I don't like that um, sometimes I'd have like formatting issues that were related to some plugin that was for something else. And it was just like, just, just navigating the WordPress world as a non WordPress person uh, was not fun for me. So, and, and I, and I do use a lot of technology, so I'm just, you know, I don't know how to, how to say it. Like I'm technical, but I'm not like WordPress technical. Let's just say that. So I've always, yeah, I'm, I gotta, I gotta jump yeah. in there. I gotta jump in there, Matt, just because you saying you're not technical makes me chuckle. Cause I mean, I, you have no idea how funny I find that because I like back in 2016 or whenever it was when I was a Coast Guard rescue diver taking your program, I didn't even have a PayPal account at that time. Right. And I, I, when I just see where I've come in, in the brief, relatively brief period of time, you, I remember you running the, your programs and getting very technical, but uh, it, I, I agree with you though. I'm not a developer. I'm not a coder. So when it comes to actually making those kinds of changes in a WordPress site, I didn't even, you went down that rabbit hole. I never did, but I hear you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's kind of hard to say, like, when, I think some people might hear this and say like WordPress is not that technical or something, but like, I don't know coding and I don't know like plugins. What I hate is like when you have to update your plugins, you have to like back up your site first. Cause if you update your plugin, it could just break the whole website. Like, what is that? Like why, you know, why are we still <laughs> living in that world? There's a lot of it. So, you know, I was paying someone like a monthly fee of like, I think like 60 bucks a month. She takes care of my hosting and updates my plugins and all, all this kind of stuff. But there were just so many things that I wanted to do with the site that I just couldn't do myself. I had to find a developer. I have to make sure I'm not going to break the site. So I was exploring what other options that I have to be able to, if I, if I really want to build a media company, I want to have a lot of content. I want to have a lot of other people contributing content. I'm looking at what can I, you know, what other options are there? And I came across Ghost ghost.org and it was very interesting you go to their website you can take a look at it here i'm on the i'm on the screen right now and it's actually i actually find that their website is really well designed i don't know i when i first saw the site i perceived them as a very big company i did a little bit of research on the company and the founder and so on anytime i'm gonna um invest into any uh, any product that's going to be a big part of my business. I always actually look at who's the founder and, and, and how does that founder think about their business and the future of their business. That's, that's how I always get into these. So what's interesting about this is that the founder, he's like a digital nomad. He's, uh, I think he's like a surf dude. He's got a YouTube channel. Yeah. And, uh, and he set up this business as a nonprofit, which is also very interesting. And, and the last that I could see in terms of them sharing their numbers is that they're about a $2 million uh, per year business. Which I was surprised. To me, it looked like, wow. you know, I would say a twenty to a hundred million dollar business, which just goes to show that you know, that's just branding or perception or whatever it was. To me, it just looked a lot bigger. So I, I didn't figure out that there was such. To me, I, I, I feel like two million dollars for what they're doing is is a smaller ish business, even though it's still a lot. Um, but I thought it was very interesting. So they have a lot of room to grow. And again, I just, I did a lot of research on kind of like where they're at now in their business and like where, you know, what the possibility is. And so ghost is interesting because ghost, you could, you could build your own. They're very big on, on helping people build a publishing business, similar to something like a Substack. A lot of people are creating newsletters, like paid newsletters. A lot of journalists are like leaving big media companies to start their own newsletter that people will then 
pay like a monthly fee to get access to through a newsletter. So Ghost is similar. You can actually turn your blog posts into uh, a newsletter very easily, but they're very they're a lot more focused on um, publishing on the web, and um, it's it is very limiting. So it's limiting. There's not so many plugins and features and so on. Um, I ended up buying a template from a company who then customized it for me. And uh, they told me that even when you make a template, you can only customize up to like five things, you know? So they're, they're purposely making it limited so that way it doesn't get too complicated. And it is just very easy to use. Um, I had an intern just start working with me recently. I gave him maybe like five or 10 minutes of instructions and then said, go and he was importing all of our content from WordPress, just manually importing it into Ghost. And, uh, and he figured it all out pretty easily. So I do like that like all the basic things that you need are all there. It doesn't do everything. I wouldn't recommend this for all kinds of websites, but if you are a publisher uh, or if you identify as like a blogger or you know something like that, Ghost is pretty good. I think you should check out Ghost. I'm still waiting to find out as we try to scale and we create more content, you know, where we're going to find limitations and, uh, and whatnot. I'll also mention that it does require knowing some coding, I suppose, because some of the small things that we got to change, sometimes we're using, it connects with GitHub and you have to like get into the code a little bit. I don't know how to code, but the guy who was customizing the, the template and the theme for me, he was kind of explaining a few things to me and it, it was kind of like, I was kind of getting it, uh, you know, but uh, I am excited to kind of learn a little bit more coding. I'm talking about like HTML, JavaScript, CSS, stuff like that, right? So I'm, uh, I'm interested to know more about it, but I'm not. And so, you know, going from, you know, WordPress is too technical for me to, you know, I'm getting into GitHub and, and coding, um, but, um, but yeah, it's just easier to manage. And because I kind of get the idea of, you know, the coding and the GitHub thing, and now I know if I need someone to do something, like it's pretty straightforward. Anybody who knows coding would be able to then adjust it for me. But once it's all kind of set up, I don't need to keep going in there and, and, and doing the coding and so on, right? But it's just kind of set it, and then, um, and then you, you know, you're pretty much good to go, and it's going to be very easy to, to get started. Well, and, and no marketer or creator should ever let that technical aspect slow them down, right? I, I think uh, you, you flagged another website for me here recently. That there's a huge push. There's a huge push for no-code options because oh, yeah. people need people are naturally creative creatures. Human beings are creative creatures, but there's really a small percentage of people that are really technically focused, technically minded in that way. Like you and I both, man. Like we're There's going to be more and more no-code options created by the coders, by the technical people, and then uh, and they just watch... Like watch content creation to get blown up to a brand new level that we haven't even seen yet, right? That's that's how I feel about it. Anyways. Yeah, this idea of like no code apps is becoming more and more popular, right? Like I just discovered like Bubble. I think we were talking about Bubble, and there was a few other ones that you could use to like you know create like applications for the web or and so on, right? And and it's all at a very early stage right now, right? Like even like Bubble is like not completely mobile optimized, or it would just take a lot to mobile optimize it, right? Um, but it is interesting to see. That the CMS space, right? So when I say CMS, it means content management system, right? Which was has been dominated by WordPress. I think I think eighty or ninety percent of websites are, on the web are, are built on WordPress, right? Um, there's other ones. I think what is that? Magento. Um, there was um, uh, Drupal. Uh, there was a, there was a few other ones. I all kind of got started at the same time as WordPress, and WordPress really took off, right? Because it was open source. People can like add on to it and, and, you know, create plugins and themes and so on. So it has a really large ecosystem, but it's just interesting to see something like ghost starting to pick up steam. And, um, and the fact that there's even space for a new CMS, I think that to me, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Very cool, man. 